Hello and uh, welcome to this EXP training video on ACCA Paper 1. Now we're just going to be carrying on with Chapter 1 and, and moving on from the previous video. We're on page 9 of the Express Notes, which again, if you've just joined us on this video, can be downloaded free of charge on our website www.theexpgroup.com. So on, on page 9 we're looking at different levels of planning within an organization. Now what we've got here are three levels. We have strategic, tactical and operational. So as the name suggests, strategic looks at the big picture. So all the long-term issues involved with the whole company, it looks at planning for the big picture, the strategy. We then focus down a bit when we come to tactical, the mid-range one. This looks at how we plan for the medium term and how we use individual resources. And then the final one, focusing down a bit further, operational. These are day-to-day -day planning issues, how we deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. So we have strategic, which is the big picture, long-term, tactical, medium term and operational day to day. Now going down here we have three main stages of the strategic planning model. Uh, for those of you when you get to paper P3 you will recognize this. This is part of the rational model. The rational model to strategy. It has three main stages. One, two, and three. The first one, analysis second choice, third implementation. So when it comes to planning, the first one, we need to analyze things. Analyze what are our objectives, what are the key stakeholders, what resources do we have, what's happening in the environment. All of this takes place at the analysis stage. We then have the choice stage. What are we going to do? What are our options? Do we launch new products? Do we enter new markets? And then we have the implementation stage. How do we implement our ideas? What change management models do we need? Okay, the next one, we've got marketing. Now, marketing is a, a science, is a whole subject in itself. We're only just going to cover the, the tip of it, really. So we're going to cover some of the, the initial key areas. Now, the Chartered Institute of Marketing defines marketing as the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements profitably. What is one of the, the core areas, the key areas within marketing is something known as a marketing mix. Marketing mix also known as the four P's. Now uh, quite a nice phrase here is a marketing mix represents controllable variables. So what do we mean by that? Well, it's, it's variables, things we can change, and they're controllable. That so means it's things we can change, things are which are within our control to change. The four P's, as you would probably guess, begin with P. Product, price, place, and promotion. So what we're saying is that we can change each of these four P's. We can change the product, we can change the price, we can change the place and the promotion. We can adjust those to target each segment of the market. So, for example, if we think of product, if we think of Coca-Cola, for example, what is a product? Well, we have the traditional, the classic Coca-Cola. We will have Coca-Cola Light, we will have um, diet coke will have coke zero we can have cherry flavored coke so the product would change in terms of the taste but also the product has packaging involved so it could be a two liter bottle one liter half a liter bottle a can for example all these are things which are controllable which can be changed in the product the price the company can affect the price so coca-cola can offer um, discounts, promotional packages. Place, that's a distribution channel. So where do you buy Coke? Is it shops, restaurants and so on? And probably what is quite key for Coca-Cola, promotion. 
how do we promote Coke? Whether that's television adverts, magazine adverts, internet, uh, promotions at supermarkets, below the line, and so on. So, marketing, the four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. We move down to the next page. What we're going to talk about a bit now are the main types of organizational structure that you can find within an organization. The first one is known as the entrepreneurial structure. Now, this is based around one central source, the boss, the entrepreneur. And the boss will have staff reporting into him or her. Entrepreneur, generally you would find that in, in smaller types of organizations, often in startup businesses which are relatively small. Uh, what are the advantages? Well, the boss knows everything, he's in touch with all of the staff members, so it's quick to react. It can be quick to react to opportunities, quick to react to competitor movement. Another advantage is very close to workers, that there aren't a lot of uh, levels in the hierarchy, so it's working, the boss is working close with all the staff. What's the disadvantage? Well, as the diagram shows you, everyone is relying on the boss. So it can be quite stressful for the boss. If the boss has an accident or is ill, then suddenly there could be issues there. Also, if you think of the entrepreneurial structure, if you had the boss and four members of staff, that would work. What happens with 10? Maybe still okay. 20, 30, 40, or 50. Once you get above a certain size, the entrepreneurial structure is very difficult to maintain. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is the functional structure. Typically, the functional structure occurs when an organization grows past the entrepreneurial stage. When it grows past the entrepreneurial stage, it moves into the functional. The functional structure, and this is based around functions of a business. The example here, we've got the board of directors, and then you have a sales function, production function, finance function. These are split into departments. Other functions could be HR, could be research and development. So built around functions. What are the advantages? Well, you know, it allows growth. One of the disadvantages of the entrepreneurial function is that it was difficult to grow. With the functional, it enables growth. Also, you can start standardization, specialization. The sales department here can start focusing on sales techniques, production, working with engineers on production and so on. Disadvantages, well, it could be slow. And another disadvantage, you could end up with conflict between the various departments. Okay, if we then look, the next one we're going to look at is divisional structure. Divisional is generally found in larger businesses. So a division is bigger than a department. Now the divisions of a business, we've got two categories here. It could either be product division or geographic divisions. So an example of a divisional structure for a vehicle manufacturing company, let's say it could be BMW or Mercedes, they could have a car division, a truck division and a motorbike division. Now within each of these divisions there would then be the departments. So there could be sales, production, there could be HR, research and development and so on. Another method of using the divisional structure is based on a regional basis or geographical area. Here we've got company split to Africa, Asia and European. So there's no clearly right or wrong. All it's saying is the divisional structure is bigger. And remember within these divisions there would still be the departments. Now the next thing just to briefly mention is what is known as a matrix structure. The matrix structure is all about dual reporting. So for example we've got an individual here reports into his country manager but then also reports into a 
head office sales director, for example. So this is a sales manager for a certain country, reports into the country manager and also reports into the head office um, sales director. That's an example of the matrix structure. Okay, thank you for listening to today's video. Um, please check back again and watch the next video as we continue with chapter one. Thank you very much for listening.